What's up guys, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. Now keeping corals is very much like having children in the sense that it is important to choose your favorite. And today I have done exactly that and I have chosen the top eight corals that I like the most out of the roughly hundred I have. So I'm gonna give you a breakdown of those. I'm gonna tell you the one coral I really hate and I'm gonna tell you what conditions all of these corals seem to like. Now, if it's your first time here and you want weekly reefing goodness, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Right, let's get stuck in. In at number eight is an LPS coral from Indonesia. It's an octospawn which is a member of the Euphilia family along with corals like hammers and torch corals. It has piercing green fleshy tentacles with light blue tips and it really stood out in the shop when I saw it and was one of those corals that I just had to have as soon as I laid eyes on it. But it's been through a bit of a journey in my tank. I first had it on a platform with some hammer corals but it shrank back and almost completely died. I moved it to a lower light area to recover and a year later it's looking healthy again and starting to grow back. Because it's well shaded I don't get to see it in all its glory but the bigger it gets the better it should look so it won't be long before it's back to its stunning best. Next up on my top 8 corals is this rainbow acan. It's really hard to capture its true colours on video but to the eye you see red, blue, pink, yellow and green. I've always found it hard to come by nice acans in the UK and this one is all the more satisfying for me as I bought it as a single head around 18 months ago. It also happens to look rather delicious under blue lights. Again the video with an orange filter doesn't quite show the true colours but you get the idea. It's about an inch off the sand bed so it gets relatively low light with flow low enough to keep the polyps moving gently, all of which it seems to find rather agreeable. At number 6 is the first SPS coral, the ever popular barley shortcake. Now this has been a real slow grower for me. What you see here started out as a 1 inch frag around 2 years ago and while it has based out significantly it steadfastly refuses to shoot up branches. Getting the colour right on these is a bit tricky and this still isn't quite as bright as it might be although it did spend a good few months looking rather brown so I'm not complaining. It gets strongish light and strongish flow and it's shown better colours as my phosphate has come down which is no surprise. Number 5 on my top 8 corals is this colony of Ark Woodstock Rainbow Zoas. Firstly they're a gorgeous colour with shades of green and purple and lovely speckled lashes. But they've also grown over a stick of rock I put them on into a really nice shape. The reason these are my favourite zoas in the tank though is because they host my two da Vinci clownfish. These little guys spend most of their day swimming around the zoas and bury themselves deep in the polyps at night. Because the zoas spread so fast I have to regularly remove the stick and frag the polyps. For now the clowns allow it but clownfish can get very territorial so I'm expecting them to start putting up a fight at some point. Next up is another SPS coral. It's an Aquapora and I think it might be a Taraki or a Lakani, but I'm not quite sure. So if you're a bit of a stickhead, let me know in the comments what you think it might be. Whatever it is though, it is ruddy fantastic. In a hobby where green corals are ubiquitous, it takes something special to stand out and this is so bright you might go blind if you look at it too long. It's also smooth skinned which adds a bit of variety to my tank. I keep it in relatively high light and strongish flow and it too has shown better colours since my phosphate has reduced. And when I say reduced, around a month ago my phosphate was as high as 0.6 and is now down to around 0.2 and falling lower. First on the podium of my top 8 corals is my Meteor Shower Cyphastria. Now I've spent hours playing with the white balance on my camera trying to get a true representation of the colour for you but it always looks slightly washed out. In the flesh though it has a bright blue purple base that is so strong it catches my eye every time I look at the tank. And its vivid red polyps stand out proud against the blue skin while finishing it off are yellow lashes on the tips of the polyps. This is in the far corner of my tank so it receives low light and flow which are supposedly the perfect conditions for Cyphastria. I have 6 other Cyphastria, most of which were more expensive, but none come close to looking as stunning as the Meteor Shower. They're dirt cheap to pick up as frags and they're easy to keep so if you don't have one, go and get one and thank me later. And the runner up on my top 8 corals is the Gold Rush Montipora. Now I'm cheating slightly here as the coral in shot is from a UK agriculture facility called Frag Farm. But I'm showing you this as it's the mother colony of the frag I have so it shows its true potential. And here's my frag looking rather less spectacular I'm afraid to say. But it still looks fantastic and that's all the more impressive considering it was 90% dead as recently as a couple of months ago. It was getting too much light and too high phosphate and it pretty much bleached out completely. So I moved it to a lower area of light and gradually reduce my phosphate over time. 
But now it's recovered, I expect it to start spreading and colouring up even more. Montipores are some of the most spectacular corals in the hobby in my opinion, and the Gold Rush Monty is the king of them all. And when I put this list together, I found myself drawn to corals that have gone through hardship and I've managed to pull them back and get them close to their best. Now before I tell you my favourite coral and the one I hate, I'll show you a few honourable mentions that didn't quite make the cut. There's this beautiful light green aquapora with red polyps that's spreading into an awesome bushy shape and is sprouting out brilliant white branches. Then there's my giant Sunset Monty colony with its vibrant green polyps sitting on a red carpet. And Sunset Monty is another cheap coral that will look awesome in any tank. Then there's my John Deere Leptostraea which is the only coral I've ever had that looks properly fluffy and its green polyps hide its bright yellow eyes. My second favourite though is Utter Chaos also just missed out despite being one of the brightest glowing corals under blue lights. There aren't many orange corals out there so this also adds great variety. And I have a few nubs of SPS like this Heart of the Sea Orange Aquapora that will become something special in time, along with this rather bland looking Aquapora that is actually a true homewrecker. And finally this Sunrise Millipora that has potential to grow into one of my most spectacular corals. And number one on my list of my favourite corals is this amazing Indonesian Aquapora Latistella. It's grown to a good sized colony in just two years from a one inch frag, and now shows bright pink branches with white growth tips and yellow coralites. There are many pink corals out there, but to my eye, this is the most perfect colour example I've seen, and it's the one coral I have that I don't think would look out of place in more or less any Aquapora dominated tank. It receives par of around 250 and relatively strong flow, and it's the branching pattern that is just as stunning as its colouring. It's the coral I look at most in my tank, the coral I photograph most, and the coral I show clips of most often when I'm making videos to show how awesome corals can be. And finally then we come to the one coral I hate the most in my tank, this green acan. And there's a number of reasons I hate it. Firstly because it was sold as having pink markings that I've never been able to get the best of no matter where I put it, but mainly because it's just so boring compared to my nicer corals. And because it's properly encrusted onto the rock, I can't remove it. Believe me, I've tried. Now I've talked a lot about keeping only awesome corals in this tank, and this drab green acan serves as a constant reminder of my failure in that regard. One day I'll be able to resist buying corals just for the sake of it. One day. Now there are loads of other corals in this tank that could easily have made the cut for this list and I reserve the right to change my mind later on and decide I prefer others. If you enjoyed the video then give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week and until next time, happy reefing.